In this video, we'll see how to configure an NRF24 L01 Plus module as a transmitter with a PIC18 F252 microcontroller using the PICIT3 module and the MPLAB XID. And we will be sending an integer array to a receiver which is consisted of an Arduino Nano and again an NRF24 module. We will be observing the transmitted values at the receiver side using serial monitor of Arduino IDE. Let's take a look at the connections between the PICIT3 and the PIC18 F252 microcontroller. The MCLR pin on the PICIT3 will be connected to the MCLR pin on the microcontroller. The VDD pins will be connected on each side and the VSS ground pins will be connected. The PGD pin on the PICIT3 will be connected to the PGD pin on the microcontroller. And finally, the PGC pin will be connected to the PGC pin on the microcontroller. In addition to these connections, we have a 8 MHz crystal oscillator connected between the OSC1 and OSC2 pins and they are connected to the ground over two 22 picofarad capacitors. And we have a 10 K ohm resistor between the VDD and MCLR pins. Now let's check the connections between the PIC18 F252 microcontroller and the NRF24 L01 Plus module. RC0 pin is going to be connected to the master out slave in pin. RC1 is going to be connected to master in slave out pin. We won't be connecting the RC2 pin. RC3 pin is going to be connected to the CSN pin. RC4 pin is going to be connected to the S clock pin. And RC5 pin is going to be connected to the CE pin on the NRF24 module. And we'll need to connect the VCC to a 3.3 volt power source and the ground to the common ground. Now let's check the connections on the receiver side. The 3.3 volt is going to be connected to the 3.3 volt pin on the NRF module. Ground will be connected to common ground, C to D8, CSN to D7, S clock to D13, master and slave out D12, and master out slave in to D11. Let's see our setup that we did based on the connections we just saw. Here we have our receiver, Arduino and the NRF24 module, and it's connected to the laptop to print the received values to the serial monitor. Here we have an MSP430 launchpad. I'm using it as a 3.3 volt power supply for the transmitter NRF24 module. You can see the 3.3 volt and the ground connections here, and I connected the launchpad to my laptop to get power. And this is our transmitter NRF24 module. It has five data connections going to the PIC18 F252 microcontroller and it's getting the power from the launch pad. And here on the breadboard, you can see the setup with our PIC3 here. It's going to be connected to the laptop. Now let's take a look at the quotes first for the receiver side, for the Arduino side. In our sketch, we are including the necessary libraries and then we are initiating the radio communication and in the infinite loop we are saying that while the radio is available the data that you are going to receive is an eight element integer array and you print it out on the serial monitor and this is mplab x id and this is our code for peak microcontroller the transmitter the first section is related with the configuration bits and uh, one of the first and important lines here is the oscillator is selected as high speed because we are using an 8 MHz crystal. You need to use this HS if you are using 16 MHz as well. And this is our crystal frequency. You need to set it to 8 MHz. And we are including the XC.H and NRF24.H. And you can see that in the NRF24 library, we have the instruction codes. These are taken from the product specification for the NRF24 module and also the register addresses. Here, there is a conflict with the NOP and the status definitions because these definitions are also in the PIC microcontrollers uh, library, but it's working this way. You can change them to other names, but it's working as it is here we are seeing the connections for the nrf module and our microcontroller here we define some integers these are the lists of the red 
registers. This section is important because we need to set these values to these registers in order to communicate with our receiver because our receiver, the Arduino side, also has these values. And this is the list of the functions that we will use in our main function. And in our main function, first we define a payload which is going to be sent in a loop. You can see that it's an eight element integer array. And we define our outputs and inputs by the tris C line. And then we start configuring the registers. And we say that write register to this register, this value, that value, and then we end configuring the registers. And this is our infinite loop. And in the infinite loop, we say that we are going to send a payload, that's write transmit payload. And we, then we send our payload. Actually, it seems that we are sending this payload twice. The reason for that is we are sending a 16 byte array, but the payload width is 32. So that's why I'm sending it twice. And in this section, we are clearing the status register and we are flushing the TX34. And here we can see the definitions of our functions. This is S clock pulse. This is send bit function. This one sets C on and C off, CSN on, CSN off. This is a write byte function. Actually, we are not using it in this application. This one we are using the instruction byte MSP first for sending the instruction byte. This one is for reading byte, write byte MSP first. This one is for sending the payload. Okay, now we are going to connect the picket tree in order to configure our microcontroller. Okay, but you can see that I did not connect the other side of it, so it won't be able to communicate. So I'm connecting these jumper cables first, and then I'm going to connect the picket tree to the laptop. And now it's already receiving, the receiver is receiving these values because I had already programmed it, but let's program it once again to see it better. You can see in the output section of the MPLAB X ID that it's erased the device, it's programming. And once it's programmed, you see our values being received by our receiver. Now let's change this payload in order to observe whether it's updated in the receiver side as well. Okay, I'm going to change some values of this eight element integer array. And let's save it and program our microcontroller once again. Okay, you can see that the values are updated and our receiver is receiving the updated values. Now let's try another crystal. This one is 16 megahertz. Probably you cannot see it clearly, but we were using 8 megahertz crystal previously. Let's disconnect the picket tree and take the 8 megahertz crystal out from the breadboard. And we can mount the 16 megahertz crystal instead. You can use the same capacitors, 22 picofarad capacitors. And once we connect the picket tree, the circuit is going to get power again and the receiver is going to show us the values. You can see that there are some different values. This one, for example, eight different values in the log 
actually the only constraint that the NRF24 L01 plus module is the maximum speed that it communicates with the microcontroller is 10 megabits per second. Actually, 16 megahertz crystal will also be okay, but I suggest to use 8 megahertz. Here we are changing the crystal frequency definition. in order to have proper delays because we are using these delay functions. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a five volt regulator. I'm going to disconnect the picket three. I've already disconnected it. And I'm going to supply five volts to the circuit to our microcontroller. The NRF module is still getting 3.3 volts from the launch pad. So when I connect it to a 12 volt adapter, I'm getting five volts to the circuit and you can see that I'm having the values in the receiver side as well. So it's working properly. My transmitter is working properly. 